Good morning, folks. Let's get right to spaceweathernews.com. Take a look at the solar images from the last day. Starting zoomed in on the north, incoming. One of the filaments decided he wasn't even going to mess around with the Earth-facing disk. Goodbye. The filament out ahead of him saw the whole thing go down and was like, well, geez, I'm not taking on the Earth-facing quiet by myself, and he left as well, diving back towards the limb. Of course, we didn't need them to have a space weather alert at Earth. We have two of them, actually, and the first one is a combination of two interplanetary shockwaves that could strike Earth's magnetosphere as early as lunchtime in the eastern U.S. today. NASA and NOAA have agreed that the most likely arrival time is 6 to 8 hours later, about 12 to 16 hours from now. Magnetic storms are expected. A note about the previous storm. Add to the nuclear plant glitches, telecom outages, and transformer fires a massive blaze at the BC Hydro Station. This was also due to a transformer issue, they believe, and it began, you guessed it, during the disruption from the solar storm. Solar flaring remains very low right now with only intermittent sea flares. The Earth-facing quiet has dominated the only sunspot group on the disk. Despite its tremendous size in the lead umbra, we have separated magnetism and therefore little chance for M or X-class flares. Solar wind is calming. A brief increase in particle speed yesterday resulted in a touch of instability returning to our shield, but that should wane before the CMEs arrive. I told you there were two space weather alerts. This is the second one. As website members know, we could see solar fireworks for Saturnalia due to planetary geometry already lining up with Jupiter, and then a four-way conjunction from Mercury occurs to close out the year. Earth-facing quiet yields only to planetary forcing and sun-diving comets. Hopefully you remember from yesterday that the Caribbean Oval was on alert. Just on the western side of it, we had a significant earthquake. Beyond the purple anomalies you see near that area, which are actually even stronger except that there are small areas of missing data at the green hash marks, the Caribbean area would have had anomalies there as well. But watch what happened in just 24 hours. We went from a strong negative anomaly there, almost breaking up into positive territory. That's a big one-day change in that area where the quake occurred. Also, folks, for a couple days we've mentioned that the only relevant Earth spot right now was a typhoon that struck the Philippines. They took yesterday's second largest earthquake there. The only coronal hole on our doorstep is confined well to the south right now, with another filament dancing in too. Yeah, buddy, we see you trying to sneak in there behind the hole. Top links today include an animation of asteroid impact adding to the lunar atmosphere. It does indeed have one, and Laddie is about to learn more about it. We also have one of the best images ever seen of star birth. It is uncanny how these cosmic jets we see in stars and galactic centers matches polar jet phenomena on our sun and here at Earth as well. It waddles, quacks, and has water-repellent feathers. Methinks I know what that is. Of course, the story continues here as well, folks. Three years of cold records winning over heat has been quashed this year by El Nino. However, it is peaking, so a shift back in mid-2016 is now officially forecast by the observers. When one of the world's leading electrical engineers, university professors from across the country, and the crew from the most watched space weather news program on YouTube get together to discuss all the usual suspect topics, there's a good chance it's worth your while to be there, especially when interaction with you is one of the primary goals. And, barring a catastrophe, the Mobile Observatory will be there as well. Observers gathering in Phoenix, Arizona, January 30th and 31st, just over a month away, Details at the link below and at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your pressure, radar, and the top viewer locations, followed by current conditions and shots of our star to close. CME is expected soon. Eyes on the sun for more next week at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.